Good morning. Um, this is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions, and thanks for joining us on the third of the Kepware OPC 2020 webinar series webinars. Today's uh, webinar is about OPC DA and OPC UA and security. If you're an automation engineer who interacts with the OPC servers on an occasional basis and needs to understand a little bit more about the, the security of the OPC installations that, you, that you're installing or the OPC installations you've got on your plant, this would be a good overview. Um, for those people who are designing systems and want to understand how uh, the, the systems they're designing and installing are, are going to perform in terms of security and which ones they should go for, DA or UA, or perhaps uh, look back at previous installations they've done and speak to those customers and say, uh, this is a way of perhaps upgrading from the systems that have been installed a few years ago. If you're a IT or cyber security engineer, um, this is of particular relevance to you. So here's the agenda, um, OPC DA and OPC UA, a little bit about those. Um, then if you do want to get OPC DA installations and convert them to OPC UA um, to increase the security, that's, that's part of what's covered and also how you use OPC UA to bridge between IT networks and O2 networks. And as I say, this leads on to next week's webinar, which is, covers that in more depth and moves on to even more high security or higher security solutions for that. Okay, so a little bit about OPC DA. OPC DA was the original OPC specifications from 1995. And the, the way that OPC DA works is using the authentications that actually were embedded in the Windows operating systems at the time. So Windows NT was the operating system at the time. And so the, uh, the authentication between nodes on an NT network uh, was the method was that used to secure the interactions between an OPC server on one PC, PC and the OPC client on another PC. Um, so this is based around Windows uh, system called DCOM. Um, but DCOM is very, very long in, uh, very long in the tooth now, and very old, and would not be considered anything like as secure as a, as a modern way of doing things, which is OPC UA. And so, if you consider the uh, a, a system that's 30 years old, um, it's going to have nowhere near as good security as one you'd be installing today. Uh, OPC DA only works on Windows systems, and it only works between computers on the same domain and work group. So let's dive into those particular things in a bit more detail. So the first weakness of OPC DA is the security, as I mentioned. Uh, DCOM and its associated interfaces and services are a very well recognized attack surface for malware. So uh, if you do have a network aware piece of malware that gets onto a, net, uh, onto a network where DCOM is being used between PCs, it's pretty likely that it would find its way across that connection between those two PCs. Um, if you add to that the fact that OPC DA in installations, if you think of OPC DA, DA installations going about 25, 30 years, they will have been installed by automation engineers who had no vision that security really was an issue between those two PCs. They needed to just get it working. They wouldn't have been trained on how to set up the uh, the uh, the DCOM as with the utmost security. It was a matter of getting in and getting it working. Um, even for people who are trained um, by um, perhaps Microsoft trained or security trained, configuring DCOM is actually far from trivial. And just because you get DCOM working between two computers on the network, if you add a third one, it doesn't mean that that's also going to work faultlessly. Um, it seems to be very, very, very finicky getting it working. And a Windows patch or an Windows update can often break it. So many installations were, were installed with a fairly open security settings to stop patches breaking uh, an, an existing installation. And many systems are, uh, remain unpatched uh, or unupdated from the original time, which means they're working with uh, operating systems that uh, have not been brought up to date. Many of the um, 
systems are also running under a user account of admin. Um, so uh, malware can have full access to many of the services uh, within the within the computer. So in summary, OPC DA will not put mu up much of a fight um, if you have, have modern network aware malware getting onto a network, which is something I think not all automation people appreciate. Um, so uh, this is part of the the, uh, the purpose of this this webinar is to sort of educate people if uh, if they do have OPC DA installations, they should review them and, and, and look at them uh, and uh, look to see if they can change or update them. The second the second uh, weakness of OPC DA is topological. Um, it's very common to have a, a DA client, which is uh, where the data is being consumed on a network that's actually different from the shop floor PC where the OPC DA server would be residing. But unfortunately, under OPC uh, DA, uh, those two PCs need to live on the same domain and network, say a uh, work group. So um, the DA server must really lie down on the shop floor, communicating to the shop, fl fl shop floor devices, whereas the OPC DA client really needs to live on a more strategic, higher level network. Uh, those two things don't really belong within the same domain. So if you look at the uh, the needs of a modern uh, manufacturing plant, really DA isn't really fit for purpose for that. OPC UA, on, in contrast, is a, an, a, a standard which is not based upon Windows. It's based upon um, IP uh, connections only. So it's a rooted um, way of doing things. You can you can pass OPC UA data across any routed network between devices that have many different operating systems. So you can have embedded devices, you can have Windows devices, you can have Linux devices. Um, it's extremely secure. You can use it across local networks, across wide area networks or across the internet. Because it's based upon um, IP, you can route it between anywhere and anywhere. It's very firewall friendly. You can so it uses a single port and you can design what, uh, decide what port that is. Um, and it works across lots of different devices and lots of different uh, systems. So it's extremely flexible and secure. So all you really need is a, a route between the two IP addresses of the, the IP address of the client and the IP, IP address of the server. And you can pass data between those two very, very securely. And the way the security works is it uses public private key encryption in both directions, which is very important. So the OPC UA client and the OPC UA server exchange keys in both directions. So the UA client has a key, uh, the public key of the server. So the server knows that it is, sorry, the, uh, the client knows that it's connecting to the server and only that server and vice versa, the OPC UA uh, server has a, a key from the client. So you have data, uh, you have a key exchange in both directions. So both parties know they're speaking to the correct endpoint at the other end. So that's twice as secure as perhaps you doing online banking where you have a, a public key of your bank. This would, like, this would be like your bank having the public key of you. So not only you know you were connecting to them, but they knew that it was you connecting. So it's very secure. It covers uh, all of the modern standards. So you have SSL, you have uh, RSA encryption, you have AES as well. Um, you can use certificates which are, have come from a, an authorized security company like VeriSign, but you can also use your own self-created certificates from within the Keb server software. And on top of that, you can then also apply it uh, further security using a feature within the KEP server software, which is called security policies. And there's a webinar later in the series about security policies and how it works, which gives you an extra level of security on top of the, uh, the one that's with OPC UA already. So if you do have an older installation of OPC DA and you're concerned that it might not be uh, as secure as it can be, what can you do about that? Do you have to throw it away and, and start again, or can you somehow convert it or evolve it or adapt it? So here you have a, an OPC DA server on the left-hand side. Perhaps 
it's difficult to change that server. It's down on the shop floor. Perhaps it uh, came with the original equipment itself. Um, you don't necessarily want to change that server. Perhaps you can update your client software if your client software is in SCADA. Perhaps you can go to the SCADA manufacturers and say, please, can we get the latest version of your SCADA? Perhaps update that, pull the existing configuration into it without changing what you've got down the shop floor, but perhaps update the SCADA end to be an OPC UA client. That leaves you with a problem. You've got an OPC UA client trying to talk, trying to, talk to an OPC DA server. So what you can do is you can change that you can um, add some some software down on that DA server, which will effectively be a gender changer or, or converter software between DA and UA. What it does, it sits as an OPC DA client on that computer. It communicates to the OPC DA server that's on that computer, and then out the back, it then provides an OPC UA server service across the network. Uh, there's some software called uh, the Connectivity Suite from Kipway that does exactly that. So this is a very, very simple, very, very straightforward and quick way of converting an old system from being OPC DA to being OPC UA. And then you have an OPC UA connection in the middle that has no DCOM, none of the topological weaknesses or security weaknesses that the OPC DA system had which means you can then nail down the security on both these PCs. So uh, you can update the windows on them. You can do all sorts of things that you would not be able to do using OPC DA. You can uh, install uh, the, uh, the latest patches, the latest service packs and all that sort of thing, knowing that you're not gonna break the OPC connection because it's now OPC UA, not running on OPC DA as it was before. So this is very good, a very simple way of doing things. Now. The KEP server software runs on Windows 7 upwards. Now, if you do have an OPC DA installation, perhaps it's before Windows 7, perhaps it's Windows XP or something of that nature. So Mac Solutions, we don't just sell the KEPware OPC software. We sell a couple of other um, ranges of OPC utilities as well, one of which is from a company called Cogent, which is a Canadian company. They do a, a, a system uh, which will do something very similar to this. This is called OPC DA Gateway, OPC, D, OPC Gateway, sorry. And OPC Gateway will do a similar function of DA to UA conversion on Windows operating systems that are older than Windows 7. Certainly they'll support Windows XP and Windows 2000. So if you do have some old installations, come and speak to us. It may be that Kepware will be the right thing for you. It may well be that the Cogent OPC Gateway would be the solution for you. But come and talk to us anyway and we'll show you the different options. Now, it may well be what you have is an OPC DA server and you have an OPC DA client. And perhaps what you'd like to do is move the client, which might be a, a SCADA package or a logging package or a historian package or whatever it may be. Perhaps you want to move that onto a PC that would then move away, perhaps up into a, a, onto a different domain or network. You have the DA server existing, you have the DA client existing. You don't really want to change either of them. They're functionally doing what you need them to do. Um, but perhaps you'd like to, 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 to move them apart and perhaps overcome the topological weakness that OPC DA uh, imposes on you. So what you can do is you can effectively do the same trick at both ends. So you have down on the, the OPC DA server, you have the uh, the OPC UA converter software doing a DA to UA server configuration, OPC DA client to OPC UA server. You then have the opposite happening, which is an OPC UA client to OPC DA server. So you have the, the DA client connected to a DA server as it always was, and the OPC DA server providing data to an OPC DA client as it all was, uh, always was. So you then can effectively get a connection in the middle that has no DCOM, which is secure, and you can move that OPC DA client and OPC UA server to anywhere on the network, as long as they can ping each other, they'll get a, a data connection without changing any of the software. So again, very simple way of keeping what you've got and evolving it and securing it. So you can then lock down those PCs and keep everything you had before, but you, you've increased your security and increased your flexibility. And as I said before, if these are pre Windows 7, you can use the Cogent gateway software to do exactly the, the same thing. 
Now, the diagrams I showed just now were two PCs on the same network, physical network. What happens if you want to bridge from an OT network up into an IT network where the, the clients would be on a higher network or a network belonging to perhaps managed by the, the IT guys and the, the OPC server is sitting on the server down on the shop floor. So whether this is a native OPC UA server client or whether it's one of those converted ones, it doesn't matter. It would look like an OPC UA client and server. So what happens if you are uh, making a connection with, with firewalls and between two networks? Well, the first thing is the OPC UA client will make a connection to the OPC UA server. Now, when it comes to the firewall on the IT network, that firewall will allow that connection out and there'll be no ports open um, inbound on that firewall. On this firewall, which is the firewall connecting into the OT network, you need a single inbound port open. Now, that single inbound port is a port that you could specify. And it is a port which is for the sing single purpose of allowing an encrypted connection to be initiated from the client to the server. So it's not uh, running data which is unencrypted, it's running data which is authenticated and encrypted. So although you do have a port open, and many people would say it would be ideal if there wasn't a port open, in order to get TCP connection running between two devices, a port needs to be open somewhere. Um, so if you are uh, making a connection down to the OT network, it's best to have a port open that's passing only encrypted authenticated data to a specific OPC UA server at a specific IP address. That's not much of a, of a, of a, of a security weakness compared with having other, other ports open for generic uses. This is a specific purpose and you could really lock it down into that, in that firewall. Now, notice there's no network share here. We're not talking about sharing the general uh, services on one network onto the other network. We're talking about a very specific port doing a specific thing between two specific bits of software uh, using, it, using all the encryption and authentication that goes with it. So if you do have a piece of malware getting onto the I network, IT network, there's no way it's gonna get through to the OT network using this mechanism. Some people say, okay, well, I don't really like to have ports open in my firewalls. What I'll do is I'll throw a, a VPN between those two, the two devices on those two networks, the firewall on the IT network, or make a, a VPN to the firewall on the OT network. And that will then allow data to pass through without actually having any ports open. What you're doing is effectively exchanging one weakness uh, or potential weakness with something that's a more generic weakness, because you're now part of putting a security perimeter around both networks. And those both networks can now share resources. So from a Windows perspective, the Windows machines on those two networks then have the ability to share resources between them. And that, again, would potentially allow network-aware malware to pass between those two networks. So some people say, okay, well, we're gonna use a VPN. I would counter that and say, I would say the OPC UA uh, with an inbound port specified would be more secure, but it's, it's down to you. Um, but uh, some people use this and, and uh, it's just worth bearing in mind, you're not getting something which is free from risk if, you're, if you put a, a VPN around two networks. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this webinar. Um, I'm Dave Hammond, I'm the product manager at Mac Solutions for the communications products. We've been the UK technical reseller for Kipware since 2001. So we've spoken to a, a lot of customers through the years. Um, and as I say, we sell the Kipware software, but we also sell a, a couple of OPC utility programs. One's the Cogent uh, OPC Data Hub, and another one which is from a German company called InRay, which is the OPC router. Both of those are utilities which work very nicely off the back of Kep server and can plug the data from the Kep server product into other systems. And we have webinars about those uh, as part of this series. We, we dovetail parts of that functionality into these OPC uh, webinars later on in the series. So please free, feel free to join us on those. I hope you have a good day and stay safe and well. Thank you.